introduction and thank you for the invitation. Um, I need to stay guarded like there's a, there's a, there's a dialogue in my screen. Hopefully it will go away. So anyway, um, yeah, no, it's good. Uh, so this presentation will be about analytical model building. And I'm going to share with the audience a couple of things regarding analytical models. So first of all, what is an analytical model? So I go through the synchrony generator, induction machine, some of the fax device, service to control the series capacitor, and then go to this uh, inverter-based resource with static frame current control. Then the main use of the analytic model will be analysis. So I'm going to share with the audience two approaches of analysis. One is the conventional way model analysis, like eigenvalue, participation factor. The other one is called block diagram, uh, frequency domain analysis. So finally, a few words on the concluding remarks and forward thinking. So I will move forward just to talk about what is an analytical model. And uh, this is the very famous people, Robert H. Park. Usually I read a paper, it just say R. H. Park. So I didn't know his name is Robert uh, until now. So this is Robert Park and he wrote this nice paper, 19, uh, 1929, when he was only like 26 years old, he already did this. Uh, and this is the paragraph I took from uh, US National um, Academy of Engineer. You can see that Charles Concordia gave the memorial tribute to uh, Robert Park, which is said the Park's equation uh, that Park did in uh, 1929, uh, provide a set of relations that made practical and simple calculation of the dynamic performance. So make th those words practical and simple. And in fact, it is a very mathematical, this paper, and I think it's very, very um, sort of provoking. So essentially, I think what Paul has done, um, you, you have seen this all, you know, all throughout the textbook, is essentially to make sure uh, we view the uh, state windings uh, in the uh, state uh, ABC for uh, frame, ABC state winding, AC sign, so the waveform that it be, can be converted to the router uh, as two uh, um, circuits in the router, and it basically rotate rotating. So then the ABC, the sinusoidal ones, become DC variables. And the machine textbook usually have this. This is from cross textbook. You, they, they just put the circuits like this, D axis, Q axis, and zero x. There's no this kind of uh, flux like a uh, coupling like uh, Bergen's book. I think this book is more uh, probably circuit is more straightforward. Right? Now moving forward, I think now we can just have a feeling of the typical analytical model. Uh, the main feature is that state variables are constant at the state to state. There's no sinusoidal AC waveforms. It is all DC variables. And what can it be done? Why it is so good? Number one, steady state computing is good. Uh, now we can do phase impedance models, do steady state analysis, like uh, phases, power, real power, reactive power. Number two, time domain simulation can be much faster compared to if you deal with 60 hertz that uh, your time step is much uh, shorter. Uh, number three, linear analysis is made uh, very, very fast because you can do Jacobi linearization by numerical perturbation instead of doing derivation. So in my opinion, the core techniques uh, per unit. Uh, and per unit uh, is not usually uh, spelled, but I read Park's paper, he kept saying per unit, per unit this. And I think in the audience, probably, um, maybe not in the audience, like Saraj um, Dobo from University of Minnesota, he recently published a paper on per unitized stuff. And that is mean that per unit is really an important thing. Second is, is the coordinate uh, conversion, that is that AC circuit, you can view it as a DC circuit. So that's the core techniques. So another example will be Charles Diamond's phase impedance model because we just mentioned the phase impedance model, it looks just a special realization of the dynamic uh, circuit. So again, this is textbook material. If you look at any undergraduate textbook or machine, you will find this induction machine circuits, the stator and router. It is a simple circuit, but it combines stator side, rotating side, and the mechanical speed somewhere here that the slip. Uh, this is really sort of provoking because it's so simple and people will misunderstood it, think that this is a simple circuit everybody, everywhere it is 60 hertz. In fact, it reflects different frequencies of um, like state of side 
uh, fundamental frequency, and then root side uh, slipper frequency. And the critical relationship is, of course, Faraday's law. And you can see it actually written like this. The uh, state side, root side EMF share the same flux linkage of flux. And they are proportional to the frequency. And they have share different frequency. So what is exactly is that kind of like, a, like get to this? In fact, I think time has uh, put a lot of efforts to derive this. And uh, like that's page pages derivation to come up to this. Unitized is the first thing that uh, we don't have the ratio, right? turns ratio. Second is the physical frame conversion that we actually view this thing is from the state side. The root of circuit is actually viewed from the state side. Uh, most important thing this time, it's the time domain to frequency domain conversion. Right? So you can see these are the phases. These are the phases of different frequency instead of instantaneous variable. So you can see this is domain conversion. Yeah, that's another conversion. All right. so. Using two, uh, this example, I can move a little bit forward because this is my favorite circuit. Uh, because I think this is a, a special realization of gen, gen, general dynamic model. So we can do reverse engineering, make it go back to a dynamic circuit. And that is what happened. We can replace J omega by S, and we deal with slip, and we got this circuit. And this circuit is really nice because it's a Laplace transform. And if you look at that you can express this uh, stator and router using Laplace variable and they can express in different frequency. Right? And then you can take a conjugate mathematically that reflect the ne negative sequence circuits. And finally, if you look at this uh, resistor, equivalent resistor at a certain frequency range, if you look at that, when the frequency uh, J omega is less than this omega M, then you can see that it is negative. Uh, that is the cause of a lot of these SSI issues, some single resonance issue. You have seen it in type 3 wind farm um, connected with this series cap capacitor. And uh, so this circuit actually gives us lots of uh, things to think about. Okay, so uh, linear analysis is the thing that we really like about uh, analytical models. Uh, if we go to physical lab, or if we just go to EMT lab, EMT simulation environment, we probably end up with a simulation model like this. Here it is a MATLAB SimScape model, has everything like switching dynamics, switching uh, stuff, uh, and ABC. Right? This is the, all the ABC current voltage. So this one is not an analytical model. Uh, number one, it is uh, called a non continuous variable because there's uh, this up and down, this kind of uh, switchings. Number two, the state variables are time brine. So this, this you can, of course, you can do frequency scale. You can claim that I can do a lot of experiment. I still get this linear model, uh, but you cannot do it efficiently using numerical perturbation. So we want to get LTI model, linear time, in the right model, just doing one step, numerical perturbation. So therefore, uh, usually for switching dynamics, uh, besides like the models, of, uh, you see that the single generator induction machine, we have to add one more step called average technique. And that is the power electronic people's contribution in 1970s. They did this kind of thing called averaging. So therefore they get rid of switching dynamics. They just uh, leave this fundamental component and got that. So once we arrive at this step that we have LTI model, we can do anything. We have all these tools that uh, for, our, our, for us to use linear algebra. Uh, frequent domain analysis. Right? This is an easy conversion. All right, so with that, I will do uh, two more examples just to show you some tricky devices to model. For example, in the previous decade, uh, this is TCSC Sarist control series capacitor. Uh, the switching is uh, uh, one switch per cycle. Uh, and this is a little bit difficult to, uh, to see because you can see that the waveforms that the current through here and the voltage across is not sinusoidal. Of course, people can do it like this, just doing like a controllable voltage, controllable impedance like this. But however, this has the assumption that the voltage is the sinusoidal. So therefore, in order to uh, really convert it to an analytical model, uh, we have to do a lot of assumptions. One of the assumptions is that we can only examine the fundamental frequency component phases. Uh, therefore, we can got this kind of model, a state space model doing a lot of derivation. Uh, it is a two by two uh, yeah, matrix, impedance matrix, but it has a four order. Uh, that's our previous work when we are trying to do say, ah, oh, you can TCSC damp out the SSR issue in the type three wind farm, so we have to derive the uh, impedances. 
Uh, let's see another tricky one. Uh, this one is very close to this uh, UUIBR uh, stuff, like called the inverter based resources, what you source converter. Uh, and usually we see that every control, everything control is implemented in the DQ frame. Uh, here it is slightly different. The current control is implemented in alpha beta frame. It is uh, still a static frame. Uh, now, if we want to derive, like if we, we put the EMT, it is like a DQ and ABC, and we don't like it, we want to have analytical model. So how do we do uh, frame conversion? Uh, so frame conversion, if you don't have this, if everything is controlled in DQ, then you can just deal with the grid dynamics and convert everything to the DQ frame, grid frame DQ. Uh, if you have this one, uh, you, you still can do it, uh, except that you have to do a couple of derivation and make sure that we got uh, DQ in PLL frame and DQ in the uh, grid frame. Uh, then in this case, not only in network dynamics, but also part of the control dynamics will be there. Now, if you have this model, you can quickly do the DQ uh, remittance, directly got it, just one step. And uh, in the past, if we just uh, deal with the empty model or in the um, uh, hardware, then you have to spend hours doing this frequency scan to get every dot and plot this kind of thing. So that's the advantage of analytical model, right? So you can, you can really make things pretty fast. Uh, so uh, in the next uh, section, I'm going to just talk about the uh, analysis because the main usefulness for the analytical model, in my opinion, is not the uh, large scale time domain simulation, rather it is analysis. And there are lots of things to be, uh, to you can do analysis. Uh, the authentic way, or let's say orthodox way is the ODE based nonlinear analytic model find out the uh, derived model, linearize it, and do model analysis. Or you, you, can, you can also do block diagram. Um, so that, that's great. But there, there's another method, I would just to say this, called uh, directly build the block diagram. You sort of like uh, integrate everything together. You, 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 you make assumptions uh, ahead of uh, model building, and then you keep doing that. So in my opinion, the, the process is more important than the method that you're adopting. Uh, the process, uh, you have to keep using reason and domain knowledge is important, hands-on EMT calculation, uh, EMT computing, hardware experiments are all important. Uh, another feature is of problem-based uh, solving approach, let's say if we want to tackle a real world problem, uh, you focus on problem. That's sort of about which method I'm going to, going to use. You just like I think the best the models are naturally come upon, depends on what you are do, doing study. So I'm going to give two examples for a deep dive. The first example uh, is called a low frequency with a grid IBR oscillations. I have presented this uh, last week in ESIG. So bear with me if you see something very similar. Uh, I'm going to also give uh, additional stuff like equations, which, uh, uh, which were not presented in ESIG meeting. So here is one real world event called the Texas Forecast Oscillation Voltage. So you can see this is a wind farm, type four wind farm connect to grid. And there is a fault that uh, line uh, bus, bus five to bus six, the design tripped. So this leaves this uh, type of four wind farm connect to the output system. Uh, now the grid strength is reduced. If you view it from, for example, the POI uh, point of interconnection, the SCR short circuit ratio reduces from four to two. Uh, so usually what's happening is that in the PMU they install there, once this is tripped, then they see these oscillations. Depends on how much the wind power is exporting. If it's exporting not a four, it is damped oscillation. If it's exporting higher, undamped oscillation in the voltage magnitude. So Alcor did some mitigation. They can replicate events in their study. And they found that this oscillation is associated with the wind plant, WPP, wind power plant voltage control. What I found is slowing down the voltage control can help mitigate the oscillation. And this is the paper published by uh, Fred Huang in 2012 in PS general meeting. Uh, so uh, we're trying to replicate this one in lab. And we also find that there are lots of other similar voltage stability ready, this type of voltage oscillation issues. For example, in this uh, task force paper, document 19 events, a couple of them are 
very similar like uh, Texas focus oscillation. So they engage line tripping system become weak or the wind power plant, solar power plant is pushing high power, more power, and then oscillation stop. And if they curtail power, oscillation um, mitigated, or they do something with the voltage controller, ask OEM, OEM or generator manufacturer to update the voltage control, and oscillation is gone. And most recently, um, we also find that there's a similar one, although this, this is like 0.1 hertz, this is reported in real world. Now, previous one, you see like 13 hertz, 4 hertz, um, 5 hertz, and uh, somewhere from this kind of hertz. Right? But this one is very slow. However, it also shares a similar feature. There's like a solar power plant, four plants connect together to a 230 kV uh, bus. And when the solar PV keep pushing, keep pushing, oscillation starts, uh, voltage. And then reality power, you also see oscillation. And you, if you look at that, there's no oscillation. And this is scalar data of one second time interval. It captured about uh, like a 0 0.1 hertz oscillation. So this oscillation has a similar nature. So it seems like a volt var oscillation, um, pretty popular. So let's take a look. So we have to look how to build this model. First uh, of all, domain knowledge. Uh, we need to understand the fundamentals of the converter control. Uh, in this case, this is the well-known book among this group that done is 2010 um, uh, textbook. Uh, but from this book, we uh, learned all these kind of things about you know, the control grid, especially grid following control. Like you have PLL to do synchronization in the current control very fast. Outer, you can put uh, P and Q uh, regulation. Right? So this, this type of controller. Uh, so next thing is that once we have controller, we can just put it into a purchase uh, converter. This is the Imperix converter with the 5,000 hertz switching frequency. And then we can put the RT lab to serve as a controller uh, and a sensor and put uh, hardware stuff like uh, in, uh, inductor, capacitor, and then connect with the grid simul emulator. Uh, yeah, so with a well-tuned barometer, we can definitely um, simulate some oscillations. For example, if we put the outer control loop like a uh, real power and reality power regulation, and we keep pushing power to the grid, we found that at some point, voltage will collapse. There's no oscillation, but the voltage just collapse. But if we change the reality power to be voltage controller, uh, VAR, VAR regulation to be voltage regulation, then three hertz oscillation appear. Right? Three hertz oscillation, sure. Or if we go back to the PQ controller, then make the peak control very fast, then um, from three hertz bandwidth change to be 15 hertz, and also tune down the current controller from 100, like 20 hertz, back down to 50 hertz, and then oscillation can also appear. But this is not a, like a good uh, design practice. This is, these two are based on the good design practice. Right? So definitely PV control can show up. Uh, and we also want to say why it is, right? because the hardware experiments or EMH simulation basically say, okay, we can do this and tune barometer and got it. So, but we want to explain, uh, for example, something explained that why it is three hertz, right? why this is uh, no oscillation, why this one has oscillation. So to do that, we have to do analytical model building. Uh, so in this case, since we are talking about three hertz and four hertz, uh, we can do a lot of assumptions. A couple of assumptions we did, include this, that the current control is very fast. So ignore the current control loop, just the uh, first order delay. Um, grid dynamics, EMT is ignored. PLL is ignored. So therefore the control is very simple. This is control is just like this. The, the rest is just design the IDIQ injection to the grid and the grid effect of uh, tied the loop back. So this is just engage a couple of equations, linearization, and in the end, we got a block diagram like this. So this is control, this is grid effect, and tied back, we have two loops. And of course, we usually deal with single input, single output loop. So this uh, voltage uh, can be, um, a Q-axis control can be aggregated into one single transfer function embedded in this big loop. And if we open this loop, we can see, yeah, this, this system can be unstable if we push more power. And uh, we can also do quick uh, simulation to show that if you push more power, you know, system can be unstable. Uh, so the mechanism from this block diagram can be quickly see that you can see that is minus negative number and ID. 
So this, this, this is sort of like this. If you push more power, change the order, the current will move up. Uh, the current will move up, the voltage will go down. Uh, the voltage go down, in fact, the delta P actually will also go down if this component is, uh, in fact, is more obvious. So then this, this the highlighted path is actually is an instability mechanism. And uh, this path will be dominant if uh, you push more power and make it greater weak than this C multiply ID, this coefficient becomes shoot up. So therefore, so this diagram actually can really explain this kind of phenomena. Right? Uh, very nicely. And it can also provide more analysis. We are not satisfied with, with this. We can we want to understand the why oscillation, right? You, you have shown oscillation, but why PQ control does not lead to oscillation, this type of analysis, and why it is exactly three hertz oscillation, not like 15 hertz or 200 hertz. How can you con connect your control design with your dynamic phenomena? Uh, so so again, we, you can do a couple of steps, like uh, replace this guy um, doing voltage control, doing relative control, and uh, assemble a little bit. Right? This is too much, so let's assemble and using this kind of block diagram to make sure that the GS, that is the Q-axis control, stand out, aggregate the rest of them. And again, those uh, body diagrams. So this is open, open loop system, we are going to do body diagram. So if we change the voltage control to be relative power control, these two were just Influence GS, like this, this kind of GS. So we examine what happened if we change this control, what GS will look like, and the internal, uh, eventually how it influence the overall system. So this is what happened. If we use V control, then the effect of uh, this uh, QX control is just look like high pass filter. Uh, if we apply Q control, not much of influence. And once we use this high pass filter, the loop again looks like uh, the blue line and you can clearly see phase shifts happening at three hertz and if you look at the red lines the q control and uh, there's no phase shift and then stability will only happen during the very 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 low frequency or we can just call it like almost like classic which is stability uh, you don't see oscillation just collapse uh, so I think this part really explain why uh, oscillation happens and the voltage control in fact contributes to oscillations. And by the way, the bandwidth of the voltage control determine the oscillation frequency. It's not the power control, it's the voltage control. So if you want to demonstrate uh, seven hertz, 10 hertz, you change the voltage control gain. Uh, so that uh, is the first one that we seem like uh, we are very happy. We can demonstrate the weak grid oscillations when uh, have, it has two critical features. Grid strength reduces, oscillation appear. High power exporting oscillation up here, right? or, or stability worse. Uh, the only thing that uh, haven't mentioned is that uh, the model that we just did, faster control is better. And uh, it's not just by experiment, it, it's actually by theoretical investigation, all this body diagram, and then we published a paper here uh, saying stability control for wind. In weak grid basically says the faster voltage you can do is good for stability, and you can do all kinds of measures. Uh, that is in 20, probably 80 paper. And later on, I checked the every people like debug, they publish another one, just showing that ask for fast, uh, asking for fast terminal control, you can get the benefit of greater for me. So again, faster voltage control is good. Uh, noted that uh, alcohol people say slowing down voltage control mitigates the four hertz oscillation. And uh, I double checked them. It's not typo. They really did that. They slowing down it in real world. So that poses the question of why, because we published a couple of papers, we were happy. In fact, we haven't really demonstrated or replicated output for us. It's some kind of different oscillation, right? So uh, after I attend a couple of industry seminars or like a NERCUS in water kind of working group, then I realized there are different voltage codes. Some of them are implemented in the inverter level. Some of them are implemented in the plant level. In the plant level, latency, or communication latency or delay cannot be ignored for three hertz or four hertz oscillations for dynamics. Inverter level can be very fast. So you can ignore that for those type of slow dynamics. Uh, so therefore, you have to include delays. So then we have to revise the model and look at block diagram. Uh, looking at just the voltage var relationship. So here is the voltage measurement order versus measurement. This is the plant level control voltage regulator. Uh, generated the Q order, pass through delay and go to the inverter level. 
The inverter level, you can model it just as, again, as a delay or first order filter to get to the uh, Q uh, reactive power measurement. Reactive power, of course, will influence the system voltage and through this uh, relationship is related to the grid impedance. So that is the feedback system. And this feedback system, if we put it into the root locus, you can see closed loop system poles will move to the right um, uh, when the gain is increasing. So that is about the four hertz and the reason is the delay. Right? Delay is the main thing to be blamed. Uh, and if we consider delay now, we can really say that the plant level voltage control, uh, you have you, you can mitigate the oscillation by tune down the plant level voltage control. Now, however, the control if it's in inverter level, of course, it will be better. So it's uh, the two different control that uh, we are talking about. Right? Uh, okay. Now this model has just a voltage relationship and a volume relationship. It doesn't have the uh, real power effect. So we have done one model. Two model. Now we are going to combine them together to get a full picture of everything: plant control and the inverter level control, including in real power and red power. Uh, this is again block diagram. Everything is linearized, but it can now really explain the critical three features: high power makes oscillation worse, weak grid makes oscillation worse, and furthermore, large plant level voltage control gain make oscillations worse. Right? Uh, okay, so now I think uh, we think we are good, right? Four hertz is done, or maybe three hertz, or this kind of hertz done, but let's move on to look at this 0 0.1 hertz. How can we use the previous one to 0 0.1 hertz oscillation? It turns out it's also pretty uh, convenient. We just uh, make sure the delay is uh, pretty long. Instead of like a 100 milliseconds, you can make it long, then oscillation can appear. Uh, there's one more critical feature that oscillation appear in voltage, in VAR, but not the real power. And you can imagine the well, real power can be or, or influenced by the voltage. So what is happening here? So we go back to the previous model and look at transfer function from delta P to delta V. And because of the inverter level PI controller, delta P versus delta V works just like a high pass filter. And that makes the gain from voltage to the real power has a very small gain at 0.1 hertz. And that explains why uh, there's no oscillation in the real power, but it has oscillation in the voltage and the reactive power. All right, uh, so it's uh, this is the first uh, study that in the end, you can see that we keep modifying the model and we have to at least des design three sets of the model to make sure this is uh, really working right. Uh, so I'm going to give the second example. Uh, this second example is more sort of like a orthodox, just an ODE type of uh, um, model. So now we don't struggle with exactly what kind of, if we actually don't know anything, we cannot make any kind of assumption. So let's just uh, uh, use this model, build a model, starting from model building, including all necessary dynamics, at least EMT type of dynamics and uh, do the work. Uh, so this is the model that you uh, have converted uh, integrated to the grid. So the only conversion, the only uh, frame conversion that we have done is view the grid. This is the grid from voltage to the grid, uh, convert the terminal. Uh, previously in EMT testbed, it should be ABC domain. Now we convert it to DQ domain. But there are two DQ domains. In fact, we are implemented in the controller. It is a DQ domain. And here is another DQ domain, right? But these two DQ domains are in fact very different because the DQ domain we are talking about should be having a fixed frequency, right? like it's 60 hertz, right? So it's rotating at a fixed speed. This one, the control level of the DQ domain is actually determined by PLL and PLL dynamics play a role here. Uh, so therefore, uh, the critical part is to designate this DQG grid DQ frame to make sure this, this ABC frame is uh, greatly representative, accurately represented. Furthermore, the PLL dynamics, you have to again change this PLL uh, frames ABC to the DQ frame. So this, this uh, the entire model can be built. Uh, so this model has been built in 20, uh, uh, 2018, about and published in 2019. And so far, I think I have seen. Uh, close to 100 maybe citations. 
Uh, so I think the critical technique is frame conversion in this case. Right? Per unit size is uh, default. Right? So let's move on to see the usefulness of this model. Uh, first, we build a different model, uh, in very same model, but it's EMT. That is that you don't uh, don't do the conversion. Right? So it's just to put in PSGAD or MATLAB same scale. Uh, this one we want to again demonstrate something, but we of course uh, uh, keep tuning the PLL parameters. So here's the simulation result that we want to show. Uh, this is uh, we keep pushing power, uh, keep changing the power order, and push the grid. Uh, initially, this grid is XG is about SCI is about two. Push the grid to full power. Uh, everything works okay. Then we trip a line. And then the XSG, the grid impedance becomes 0 0.9. That means SCR is going down to close to 1.1. It's one point, very, very weak grid. Still okay, seems like. And uh, finally, in the last step, at the last step, we ramp down the power order. And that's happening because in PV grid, it is like a PV is going up, going down, it's all the time. And now we see lots of uh, oscillations. And the reason we do this is if at the real world, I think PV, maybe maybe utility re reported, PV run down, some oscillation come up. So we're trying to just do this kind of study. Um, and we found that in the normal guideline for EMT test case, usually people didn't do faster ramp down. So oh, this is a case that we can show the oscillations. Um, and everything here, it is in the, uh, in, in the P and Q and the voltage is the magnitude, right? So you can see the voltage is controlled at one per unit. And uh, when, when the line is tripping, the angle is increasing like, from the converter to the grid. And frequency is kept at the signal, but oscillation happen. So in the ABC domain, it is very nice that you can see a uh, sinus solo, but then you can take out the FFT components. So this is 15 hertz in phase A voltage and phase A current are shown as sideband oscillations. They have comparable Magnitudes, uh, one is 45 hertz, one is 70, 75 hertz. They are symmetrical uh, against this 60 hertz. Uh, so uh, let's see that uh, EMT is that, yeah, you tune parameter, you finally got it. Also. But then if you go to this analytic model, then it's similar, it can give you batch of the results. You know, you can do the power level increase for this uh, uh, XG at 0 0.9 and do a lot of things. Here you can clearly see that ramping up and down, this is increasing power things are getting better. This dominant uh, 15 hertz is getting better, move to the, to the left. And you can also change the PLL. We can change PLL, uh, have a two filter or have one filter. Make, make sure that we get rid of one filter, PL, then everything goes uh, good. So um, I think this uh, eigenvalue analysis actually can give us directly show us, yeah, this, this is the PLL is the issue. Make system sort of like unstable uh, at uh, low power condition, right? Um, but there's, uh, I think there's a different of the insights. So this is a, this is already one good insight. So you, you can say some insights like you have seen uh, lots of oscillation, then you say pinpoint this wind farm is the bad guy, one insight. Second insight level of detail is that this wind farm's PLL is the bad guy, right? That's uh, another one. But uh, if we go more deep, then you can we want to ask this question. Uh, why high power leads to better stability? Is there any explanation? And to do that, then we can really rely on the analytical model, not just this one, right? because we want to view PLL separately. We know that PLL has some issues. So we have to make PLL take it out. We can, we can freely change its parameter, or we can do it. Uh, so the intention is that we want to have PLL out and have the rest of the system you know, put into the, another block, we call it block one. And PLL's closed loop transfer function, you can do it just by symbolic derivation, very simple. Block one, then you can do it just by analytical model. Uh, so if uh, you, I think if, if people read the uh, well, papers nowadays in both PS and power electronics, uh, lots of PLL papers, and you can see pages after pages after pages of manual derivation. Uh, this is all about how to get this. Right? But if we have an analytical model, um, it's just one step. You cannot even write a paper, right? So to say the conclusion is that Jacobian linearization saves us the manual um, derivation. I should write, I missed this one. Manual derivation, page after page derivation. 
Okay, so I want to just show this. This is the previous uh, model. Now we trying to find out block one because we just use the PLL uh, angle to the PCC voltage is audible. And here is different operating condition, uh, high power um, red line right? and uh, the slow voltage blue line and the half of the power and the faster voltage yes, the blue, you know, blue line or green line, three, three lines. Anyway, so we can see there's a difference, right? So the, you, know, you, you have higher power, there's difference. And exactly how this difference play with the entire system's uh, feedback stability, uh, we can plot a loop again. And now we have to put this PLL together and uh, multiply them and plot the body plot again. Here we will see a peak. This peak is introduced by the PLL. And the blue line is basically you are not um, ramp down the power. Uh, and phase shift happens at minus 80, uh, at about like 60 hertz or 15 hertz. And the dB is above zero. So that means there is oscillation stability issue. However, the red line and blue lines are also having this uh, magnitude above one, but the phase shift occurs much earlier or much lower frequency in this case. Uh, and then there's no oscillation issue, right? So, so that really explains why high power can, can influence uh, the stability a little bit. The, the reason is high power, slow voltage contribute. I think it's sort of like if you say less phase compensation or more phase lag, yeah, more phase lag uh, to the close uh, to the uh, to the loop again, and that really makes the closed loop system. If you look at closed loop system again, uh, uh, again values, the two of them are stable, the other is unstable. Um, yeah, so more phase lag, in fact, can help mitigate PLL induced uh, oscillations. Uh, so. Uh, this is a very sort of like a strange case uh, that we found just by using this uh, nice analytical model uh, that uh, you can do, uh, uh, you can use this and get a block diagram. And the, why the manual derivation is so difficult if, is that if you look at this diagram, you can see here's a PLL and a PLL has output will influence from this point and the measuring point, right, IDIQ, and probably this or this one, like the feed forward, feed forward unit. So if you go through the manual derivation, yeah, it really takes you like pages of the pages. Uh, but uh, if you just use this, it's just one step. Uh, this type of technique I've seen it in power system. People are usually like to do this, but power electron like to do manual derivation or symbolic derivation. Uh, both have uh, advantage, but when you cannot handle a lot, a lot of system, then you can see that uh, nonlinear analytical model, once you build it, you can use it uh, um, uh, to do that uh, analysis. Okay, um, I think I go pretty fast, right? So let me just go through the concluding remarks um, to say a few words. So this presentation is mostly about uh, uh, tools. Uh, so again, I'm an advocate of analytical model building and the linear system analysis. Uh, these are the two powerful skills and tools uh, to tackle real world IBR dynamic challenges. Um, it, the, if, when I was a student, I just used analytical model and do, do eigenvalue. But nowadays I found that you have to do, use everything together. Like, uh, not only analytical model, it has to be used together with EMT and hardware. Why? This is for validation, make sure there's no bug. Second is that you, ha you have to go to block diagram. You can do you know, if you just participate in factor, it, right. in fact, you can keep thinking and uh, do more of the frequency domain analysis. Uh, the last component is a little bit forward thinking. Um, yeah, in my personal opinion, this is a great age for people uh, working on dynamics because there are so many problems coming up in the practical world. And I found uh, just share with the audience, those organizations are super good. NERC, SIGRI, ESIG, uh, WEC, Alcott, uh, APRI, NERIO, et cetera. They post a lots and lots of documents on operation challenges and research needs. Uh, so in fact, the previous me, I read the papers, I try to explore, that's it, right? No, but a textbook maybe. But now I spend most of time, my time to, to read this and then uh, maybe half a half, right? And then still read like a steroid paper. <laughs> okay. 
uh, yeah. And the last slide I'm sharing with the audience, this is coming up from, I use it in the ESIC meeting, uh, three pillars of dynamic uh, event analysis, uh, real world events, uh, data collecting, very important, uh, as thorough as possible, do a lot of simulation. This simulation means EMT. Okay? And finally, then you do reasoning and mathematical modeling because at this stage, you always use a lot of assumptions, right? And you want to make sure those assumptions are good. Yeah, if you don't use assumptions, you'll end up with uh, too much, too many things. You cannot see anything. Right? But if you use assumptions, you have to be careful. And then there are iterations, like uh, the weak grid uh, oscillation. There are so many types, exactly which type I'm matching with uh, th this one. Uh, it really needs some iteration. So I put a couple of references. Uh, this uh, is the PSTR80, has lots of field measurements. And we also have uh, two task force papers, have lots of field measurements. And then uh, the rest of two papers are related to the South California solar PV tripping events. Uh, the event reports are um, done by NERC, and these uh, two are providing some mathematical equations to show the root causes for the uh, AC overcurrent and subcycle overvoltage. Uh, so that's it from my side. Thank you, uh, Brian, and we're ready for discussion. All right, thanks very much, Ling Ling. Um, great presentation. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and stop recording here. Okay. I think I can hit the button on my side. Oh, I think I need Diane to push the button on that. Um, but yeah, okay, uh, great presentation because of course um, here we're, we're dealing with complex dynamic systems and and I really like how you um, how you have such a a variety of, of methods that you're covering here because we're really going to have to use all of these at our disposal as we tackle things. Okay, all right, so on that note, does anyone want to jump in with any questions? Feel free to, okay, all right, Dong, yeah, feel, feel free to jump on in. Right, thank you. Uh, sorry, every time this is asked a lot of questions on, well, today, so it's quite, i um, quite proud to say that the Professor Fan actually is an alumni of myself. <laughs> I got my first degree. Um, well, I, I have two questions. First question is I noticed that in this benchmark model system, that for the voltage regulators throughout is using PI regulators. Um, have other type of regulators be considered here? Because when you are having two plums which are closely coupled together, can we still use PI regulator for voltage control? Second question is that um, for this uh, analysis approach throughout, we are using linearized approach then power system is a, a actually a nonlinear time in a time invariant system and its nonlinearity is reflected by this operating point so when the grid is very weak then for a different operating point then its dynamics actually could be very different so could these oscillations or instabilities is the interaction between the voltage regulator and the nonlinearities Thank you. Yeah, so thank you uh, for the questions. I will first answer the first question, which is the voltage regulator. Right? Um, so the reference here, if we look at the uh, industry-wise modeling assumption, the plant model can have either PI controller, uh, which is just to set the, um, make, make sure the POI voltage are controlled at this level. Um, and this, uh, and send out the reactive command, this command will be shared by multiple, let's say, inverters or plants, right? Uh, other plants. So this is one thing, but there's also, of course, the proportion control, people call it the trooper control. So both of them are available. And in fact, in the, we, we produce one figure using PI controller, but the 0 0.1 hertz we can produce it in, it's in fact, we assume that trooper control is there. Yeah so, yeah, so to just say, answer your, your question is that yes, both PI controller 
or proportional controller has been used as far as I'm aware from 